This week on Rugged Expeditions, we're going after Black Death himself. Watch as we go back and take a look at some of the highlights of past season's buffalo hunts. We need to let him come forward a little more. He's come all the way across the valley to us. This is, this is not good. Okay, here we go. So tremendous bulls, a lot of fun, some of it a little closer than planned. This episode brought to you by Choice Ammunition, Uncompromised Precision. Hunting in Africa. Does it get any better than hunting in Africa? I don't think so. Cape buffalo hunting on the dark continent takes African hunting to a whole new level. They're big, they're mean, they can take a lot of shots, and you never know if they're gonna charge you or not. It's one exciting moment after another when it comes to Cape Buffalo. Some of the best Cape Buffalo hunting period is in Tanzania. And you get down there near Maasai land, up in the mountains that surround it, that's where you get some really, really good Cape Buffalo hunting. After several days of glassing, we spot this lone bull. Maybe if we go to that bright green tree on the left down of it, if we can get it, it look kind of open there. If he stands up there, you'll see him. Bright green tree. Which one? Now if you look where the buffalo the is lying, some... at yeah. like seven o'clock. Yeah, there's a black spot and then a white spot. Yes, just on the left of that, there's a bright green tree. From there, it looks kind of open. Skulk and I kicked around a couple different options. One was going to the left and trying to come up the way that the buffalo itself had climbed up the mountain. But the wind was staying fairly consistently moving left to right. Just as I was getting to the point where I thought, maybe this bull is gone, Skull gives me the old Sure as hell, there's a horn tip, and it just moves a little bit. So now we know exactly where this thing is. The trick is to be able to get up into a position where I'm gonna be able to get a shot at him. I know that when he gets up, I'm gonna be looking at the tail end of a Volkswagen. These things are huge. We've got this bull at 18 yards snoring. But I really needed him to get up to where I could hammer him from the side and put a good one in him. And then let the chips fall where they may after that. Hey, Bull. Ah. I don't know what that second one did, but that first one did some damage. Who does he got on my job? He doesn't like American accent. The, the hey, Bull did the trick. I gave him a couple right here at like 15 yards. So I'm just gonna go up now and look, but we, we haven't heard the death bellow yet, so hopefully he stumbled down and then he was cutting away. But I don't know, now we're going to fix stuff. When an animal that size that you would think would get up in slow motion jumps to his feet like a spring chicken and starts a wheel towards you. I didn't wait and I'm not hesitating on a shot like that. I raked one right behind his ribs and tried to put it back through his front shoulder. What a bull. 
on a nice bow for up here. Just gonna make sure he's dead. Pig up. Pig up, Zuri. Come on. Come with me, time. We have a little celebration now, boys. Woo! Thank you. It's not very often that Al Smith is speechless. And I honestly do not know what to say. That was the most incredible hunting experience I've ever had. I'm my favorite animal, too. I love hunting Cape Buffalo more than I love anything else when it comes to hunting. The countryside up here in the northern part of Uganda has a lot of variance to it. We've got everything from six inch grass that looks like a big golf course to waist high long brown grass. We've got mountains. So it's a, every day it's a different variety and makes it exciting. You never know what's gonna be around the next corner. Whenever you're hunting dangerous game, one of the most important factors is who you're hunting with. Personally speaking, I've hunted with Skulk Tate for years now. A guy that if we're going in in the thick stuff, especially after something like Cape Buffalo, I know he's got my back and I got his. I was scared to death for it when I pulled both triggers at the same time. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm doing. Going to Africa to hunt Cape Buffalo is always special, but getting to go with my best hunting buddy, Mac Padgett, makes it even better. Hunting with Ellen and Mac is always an interesting adventure, where they seem to feed off each other's fear or maybe a lack of it, especially with buffalo. Thank you. Give me some love. Give me some love. <laughs> Man, what a cold. Mac and I have got a bit of a symbiotic relationship, and then you throw Skulk in the mix. What would that be, a tri-symbiotic relationship? Now you're talking about some fun buffalo hunting when the three of us get together. On our way back to camp one day, we went through the local village, tried to buy a few goodies, and a couple of the local guys came out and started telling us about these two buffalo that had been coming in and raiding their crops and causing all kinds of problems. They'd actually chased a few of the guys out of the fields. One of them had a broken horn on one side, and the other one was wounded. He had some kind of a bloody streak across his head. They weren't sure what it was from, but they said, you can't miss them. They're real distinct. We found the tracks, but it turned out that the one bull that had the bloody spot on his head had actually made it back across the park boundary. And of course, you can't go hunting in any of the national parks. So we had to leave him alone, and we called the game department and told them that he was in the park, and they would have to follow him up themselves. Lucky for us, though, and the villagers, the broken horn bull had cut away from the other one before he got to the park boundary, and we got on his tracks just to see what might happen. Sometimes you're not just hunting Cape Buffalo for fun. Sometimes you're helping out the local villagers or perhaps the game department, and that's what happened on this hunt. When you're hunting with Mac Paget, we've developed this policy that whoever's turn it is, he gets the first shot. But after that, it's every man for himself. Okay. There's two of them. Which right. one's a broken horn? Look at the one on the left. The left? See, he's got uh, he's got his head down. Yeah, he just took a step. Yep. Give him a second, let him. All right. Okay, that's him. That's All right. Him. That's the one that they want. Okay, boys, here we go. Got a rip. It's showtime. Hey, hey! Okay, here we go.
There's a reason why they call these things Black Death. Because even though you put a ton of lead in them, that doesn't mean they're not coming. Look at the bosses on him. That's a nice bull. <laughs> Old broken horn. Dugga boy. Dugga boy. Thanks, Scott. They wanted this one killed. He's, uh, he's got the one broken off horn, but looks like old lion scars on his back. That was probably what did it. Meaner than hell, so they're looking to get him out of here. That's an old one. I mean. Well, thanks a million, man, for coming over here with me and sharing this another great. This has been so awesome. Rugged it again. I, and buffalo hunting the way we love to do it. Eh? I can't look forward more to the next one. Uganda is also a great place to go buffalo hunting. The area where you're at, they somewhat define them as Nile buffalo. I'm not so sure about exactly Nile versus Cape. But check this out. These are great buffalo. Ooh, this feeding, dude. After you've seen the buffalo, now you gotta be careful. We would usually leave some of the group that was with us behind, get in on that last two, 300 yard stalk. If you can find them laying down in the shade, that's the buff you want. Keep your eyes, Keep your eyes over here. Maybe right there to that green bush. We can make it to that bush that you go have. I mean, it's gonna be perfect. Stay low. Maybe when we get up there, I'll try and get to the right of it. And if you stay right in here, then we'll at least have a crack in. Yeah, but don't forget, that other one's over here. So I'll keep an eye out this way. Hopefully he goes that way on yeah. the shot. I'm gonna go this way. All right. Even though they're laying down, as we found out when we were sneaking up on them, they're typically gonna lay one face in one way and one lay the other way. They have a symmetry between the two of them to watch out for predators, play the wind no matter which way it comes. So it's tough. Every once in a while, the situation is perfect where you can get right in close on them. This next one here that you're gonna see is about as close as I've ever gotten to a Cape Buffalo in the wide open. At some point, close enough is close enough. Back up here. Now. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Holy that crap, cool. that was awesome. We got so close to it. The wind has been at our ass all day. We have not had a break, have we? That was cool. Every time we've snuck in, something screwed it up. Finally, we got the wind to hold steady for us. 
That was awesome. I was thinking he's going to let you walk right up to him. I've never been this close to one. I've never seen you get this close to one. This one, I thought he was blind. <laughs> I'll tell you, there is, it's, there's nothing better than Cape Buffalo hunting. I think it's the, the best thing you can do. I mean, of all the hunting we get to do, this is by far the best. I Absolutely. Think. I mean, it's just as much fun now as it was the first time, and I can't wait to shoot a few more. <laughs> <laughs> this is a great day here in beautiful Uganda. Uh, great buffalo. These are the Nile buffalo species, which is really a treat to get to hunt them. Up here in the far north, we're only about four kilometers from the Sudan and Kenya border right here, so it's pretty exciting being up here in the corner of Uganda. This is special, man, but anywhere you can find one of these things is good enough for me. Thanks a million for coming. God, what a great trip. This is awesome. <laughs> We got into a good position on the mountainside where we were looking across to the other and we could see three bulls laying in there, one of which looked pretty dang good. Actually, two of them were pretty good, but one was a little better than the other. They finally started to move around on the hillside and we saw this big one. In the bush? Yeah, below the two, the two other ones on top. He's down below. With his head looking up at us? Yes, he's looking at us. We just need him to move out. I can't shoot him there. No, no, no. Just wait, he's gonna move to the left now. I think. What's this here? We were able to sneak in within about 80 yards of the buffalo. Watch, watch. When all of a sudden, the youngest one of the three, he gets up out of his bed. This bugger is serious. And this is one of those buffalo that's got attitude. Watch that one, Baraka. Okay, if he comes clearer there. So now we gotta make our decision. Do we keep watching for the other one? Do we shoot this one that's starting to come out? Okay, he's coming out from the lift. Yeah. When I saw his horns, that made the decision easy for us. seen a buffalo yeah. just <laughs> one of the other problems we ran into with hunting buffalo in the mountains was trying to get in close enough to where we could get a good shot at one in a position where we knew that if he didn't just drop the follow-up would be something that we could do you can't follow him up in the really thick thick ugly stuff at least you don't plan on doing that How about that shit? <laughs> me. You <Sure>. are. <sighs> Once I was able to collect myself, all the guys were patting me on the back. We knew it was a good bull, but after all that, it turns out that it's a great bull. What a bull. Up here on Mount Galai, this isn't what you come up here for. You're expecting to shoot these mountain buffalo, which are old and worn out to where they don't get this big hook like this. And living up here with his two buddies, they call them Ascaris. So they've been watching out for this old boy this whole time. That's why I think that one came towards us today. I think he's just, you know, keeping track of the old guy. But man, what a bull.
It's really hard to describe the feeling when something like a Cape Buffalo is coming at you full tilt and his intent is to kill you. The only way I can really describe it is it's as if everything went into slow motion. It's an experience that you'll never have ever again. And I was, uh, I was pretty emotional after it happened, I have to say.